Hi guys, so today I'm going to be covering chapter 5 or approximation methods for multi-component distillation. So in class you're going to cover um, how to do matrix solutions for distillation columns with multiple components, but that's something that will always require a computer to do and it's not something you're really going to be asked on a test. Um, so I'm going to be covering an approximation method to do that same solution for a column. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we have to define um, our components. So I'm going to be covering a little bit of definitions and I'm going to be doing a problem. So in multi-component distillation, we have things that are called heavy keys. And we usually label them HK, just so we don't have to write that every time, and light keys. And those again are going to be labeled LK. So what a heavy key is, is it's going to be your least volatile component that is in your mixture. Um, so what that means is that we usually assume that most of the heavy keys will be found in the bottoms and that not a lot comes out of the top of the distillation column. So on the other hand, the light key is going to be your most volatile component. So this is going to be the opposite where most of your light key will come out of the top of your column and you won't see a lot coming out of the bottom. Um, when you have something that is less volatile than your heavy key, it's called a heavy non-key, or HNK. And when you have something that's more volatile than your light key, you call it a light non-key, LNK. Um, so it's these heavy non-keys and light non-keys that we can assume 100% of the heavy non-key leaves the bottom and 100% of the light key leaves the top. Now this will become a little bit more clear when we do the example, but one final definition I just want to cover is a distributed non-key. So this is a component that would have a volatility that's in between the heavy key and in between the light key, so you're going to sort of find it throughout your column and you can't say too much about it. Um, so something that you should also know is how these keys are going to be distributed within your distillation column. So I'm going to take a second to draw some graphs over here and then talk about them. Okay, so here you have a system that has a light key, a heavy key, and a light non-key. Um, so the x-axis here is the stages of your column and the y-axis is how much in um, what the composition of that particular point in the stage is. So this dotted line also, just so you know, represents a feed stream coming in because as we know, sometimes a feed stream comes in the middle of your column. So here what happens is if we take a look at the heavy key, um, closer to the bottom, of course, you have a higher composition. And then as you go higher and higher and higher and higher on the stages, you have less of the heavy key coming out because it is less volatile. Now, the opposite is true for the light key and the light non-key who grow as we get to the top of the column. Um, the same is true for a system that would ma be made up of a light key, a heavy key, and a heavy non-key. So here you have, again, the light key growing and growing and growing, and then you have a similar distribution of the heavy keys and the heavy non-keys not coming out of the top of the column so much. Um, so I would take a little bit of time to look at these graphs. They are in your textbook, and it has been asked before in an exam to sort of understand this distribution and draw it out. So be prepared to know the distribution of those keys in the system. Okay, so now we're going to erase this board and move on to a practice problem. So I'm going to be doing question D1 from chapter 5, and this is pretty representative of the type of question that you would be asked about heavy keys and light keys. And in my opinion, it's one of the easiest parts of this course, so don't worry about it. Um, so in the question, we have a feed going in, distillate and bottoms, we're told that the feed is 12,000 kilograms per hour, and that we have 97% recovery of ethanol in the distillate, and 99.4% recovery of propanol in the bottoms. So the first thing we have to do is we have to identify um, which of our components are which of our keys. So because we're told we have 97% recovery of ethanol in the distillate, we can say that our ethanol is going to be our light key. Okay. Um, likewise, because we have um, a recovery of propanol in the bottoms, we can say that that is our heavy key because it's coming out of the bottom. So. Because we know that methanol is lighter in molecular weight than ethanol, we can actually say that it's the light non-key, and we can say the exact same thing for C4, um, which will just be our heavy non-key. Okay, 
So now that we've identified the components, we can make the main assumptions that will help us solve this problem. And those assumptions are that 100% of the light non-key is going to come out of the distillate. And the same thing for the heavy non-key. So our assumption is that 100% of the heavy non-key is going to come out of the bottoms. OK? Um, so the question is just asking us to find the flow rates of the distillate and the bottoms, as well as the fractions of each component in each of those streams. Okay, so how you start this question is you just choose either the distillate or the bottoms to start from. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the distillate and I'm going to try to find the flow rate. So how I'm going to find the flow rate is I'm going to use all the information given and just add it up. So it's a pretty simple mass balance. So we're going to do the distillate. We know that we said 100% of the light on key C1 goes to the distillate. So that just means that because we know 19% of it is in the feed, that we have this much of it going into the distillate. Okay, so that's C1. So we're going to look at the next component. So that's C2. We know we have 97% recovery of it in the distillate. So what that means is 97% of what's in the feed ends up there. Okay, so that one is for C2. Sorry if that's cut off, but I think you get the idea. Um, so next for C3, um, we know that 99.4% of it is recovered in the bottoms. So that means that 0.6%, because it's not in the bottoms, it has to come out of the distillate. So 0 0.006 times 0.27 times 12,000. Okay, and we also said that 100% of C4 comes out of the bottom, so that means zero is in the distillate, so we're not going to include it. Okay, so if you add these all up, you get a total distillate flow rate of 5,937.6 kilograms per hour. Okay. And that is our answer for the distillate. Now, the bottoms um, total flow rate, you can find one of two A's. The easy way is just to subtract the distillate from the feed, since we know F equals D plus B from our overall mass balance. Or you can repeat this exact same procedure, just going component by component by component, and using the information you have to add it all up. So if you do that, you get a bottoms flow rate of 6062.4 kilogram per hour. So it's just again super easy addition. Um, and then to find out the composition of these, so I'm going to do again the distillate stream as an example. It's just um, part over total. So for C1, you have 0.19 times 12,000 over your total distillate. That's 5937.6. So that'll give you 38.4%. So this is C1. And then C2, again, similar thing. So exactly what we had up there. If you want, this is faster. If you just calculate these in the beginning and then write them, and then you have your fractions later on that you can make a lot faster. But this is also correct. It just takes a little longer. 5937.6. And then here you get 61.3%. And you can do the same thing for C3. Um, and this one I'm not going to show. I think you get the idea. You would get 0.3%. And that's really all there is to it. You repeat the same thing for the bottoms. Um, because the math is so simple compared to a lot of other parts of the course, I really recommend double checking your work. So make sure that your percentages add up to 100, your D plus B equals your F, because here the only way you can really make a fundamental error is if you make a silly mistake that messes up your math. Other than that, you should be good.